Hi everyone, alongside Mike Trosel, I'm Dave Giancola. Thanks for joining us again for another U.S. Open Classic finish. The 2004 U.S. Open returned to Shinnecock Hills, the only course to host the U.S. Open in three different centuries. Two South Africans with strong U.S. Open pedigrees, Retief Goosen and Ernie Els, were in the final group, but they were being chased by two-time runner-up Phil Mickelson. Yeah, Dave, surprisingly, Els fell out of contention early on Sunday, but that cleared the stage for a duel between Goosen and Mickelson. Following a bogey in number 10, we join Goosen on the 11th hole as he looks to extend his one-stroke advantage on Mickelson. He's hit this ball high. He's turning it right to left. Left of the hole. Wow, that's a quality shot. That's the best shot we've seen. Look at this shot. Man, what a shot. Goosen, off two bogeys in the last three holes, right back with a great chance. And that's right there about as much as you're going to get out of Goosen. Uh, he knows how great a shot that was. Maggard at 13. And the second shot on the way, 113 yards. This whole location is just incredible. There's a mound between the hole and that bunker, and that is a wonderful shot right there. Jeff Maggard, one over par with that birdie opportunity. Retief Goosen has just hit it close. This tournament, the championship, is not over. A lot of golf, a lot of shots that will be, they'll be praying for him as they fly away. You can see the scores have gone up incredibly today. We'll be right back. Out to 13. Well, this just earlier, this is a, a U.S. Open round. Jeff Maggard has hit five fairways, five greens. He's had 16 putts in 12 holes. Happy Father's Day. That one goes in. Moves Jeff back to even par. Well, Jeff and his wife, Michelle, expecting twins, Murph, in September. In fact, Michelle flew in last night, six and a half months pregnant with twins. And the doctor says the due date is even a little earlier than September. Hmm. That's a great putt there. He's doing some wonderful things today around the greens. Else at 11. Just about 10 feet. Uphill should wiggle a little bit to his right. Else with a much needed birdie gets to plus three. And over to 12. Mickelson. Very poor tee shot here. Not only was it crooked, it was quite short. He's got 205 yards. The lie is decent at best, but it looks to me like he is going to try and gouge it out and maybe run it up just short of the green or even on. This is a dangerous shot. Got some stuff that he's got to thread the needle here. Get up. Well, he got a lot of club on the ball. What a shot. Stop, though. Always want to keep the ball in front of the green when you're in trouble. Always try to keep it in front if you can't get on. Who knows what kind of swing it could be. This for birdie for a two shot lead with seven to play. Mickelson in trouble a little bit over at 12. So it could be a bigger swing than just one. Who knows? Roger. Well, it's a short putt, but not an easy putt. It's got movement to the right in it. And if you come out of it a little bit or power, you could miss this putt without that much trouble. Shadow that'll be over the hole or the edge of it. Well done. He is the coolest of players under pressure. We found out about that at Southern Hills, especially with what happened, Johnny, at the 72nd hole. And the next day, after that, well, it can only be described as bizarre, what happened the three putt when it looked like Goosen was going to win the championship, sink. Involved in that, I could have ruined ruined his career if he hadn't won that playoff. Literally, 
you don't usually get a straight up hill or two putts to win the open and uh, have that happen. Well, here comes Spencer Levine, the amateur, up 18, is second, currently in a tie for 12th. And Levine, whose dad, Don, said he was just absolutely striking it coming into this championship, turned out to be a prophet because uh, Spencer has indeed. So this is a nice uh, little Father's Day deal going on here with Spencer and his dad at the U.S. Open. Uh, last top 10 by an amateur, 1971. I like Spencer, he carries one wood in his bag. Goosen, the leader by two now at the 12th. Got the driver out, wind blowing left to right. This ball starts down on the left. Cutting toward the center, right center, and it should be good. He's swinging really well, Roger. He really is hitting a lot of quality shots, John. At Southern Hills, where he won, his right elbow was a little bit more flying away from his body with trail coming down, and he could double cross it. But now he puts it right where he's supposed to, halfway down in the downswing, right into the slot. Up behind the green, Mickelson. He can't afford to make too many bogeys unless he's going to birdie some. Pretty sure, Johnny, he does not know that Goose and Birdie back at 11. This is not a bad lie back here, though. There's very little green. He's going to have to play this ball through the closely mown area, just short of the green. You almost have to pretend in your mind that that's not, it, not fringe, that it is green. You know what I'm saying? You almost like, it almost acts like, like green, that part of the grass, where he runs it up. But it'd be easy to come up short here. Just gets up on top. So Mickelson a chance to stay at that two under number. This was some touch here. Well, let's take a look at this. It's a nice little shot here, close up. So it keeps that left, well in his case, right hand firm. Doesn't break down. Blessed with such good hands in this sport. Done things from short game perspective that uh, just no one else in the game simply has ever done. Earlier this month, American gymnast Courtney Kupets capped off her amazing comeback from that Achilles tear suffered last summer by capturing a share of the national championship next Saturday, part of the field there at 8 Eastern time for the U.S. Olympic Gymnastics Trials. A little pressure in that venue. If I try to do one of those, I'd be in traction the rest of my life. Fred Funk for birdie at 12. Six over today. Plus four for the championship. Yeah, yeah. Finally. You know what, this is really quite a story, even though Funk's going to come up short here today, a former golf coach at Maryland in the mid-80s. Probably, not probably, you look at that leaderboard, he's the most unlikely name on it. He's a player, I'll tell you. Boy, you think he couldn't sell that three to Phil Mickelson right now? Jeez. Yeah, Fred Funk, you know, he's got the kind of game that's perfect for the open, though. He has very simple swing, sort of like a halo, and keeps his right elbow right against his side, and it's just a simple swing. But this is an important putt. Now, uh, Mark? It is. I think he'd like to have gotten it past the hole, so he was putting back up. Not an overly difficult putt, not a lot of break. Kind of par putts in U.S. Opens that win championships. He read it like you did, Mark. It started inside right, and it broke all the way across the hole. If you talked about that swing, that would occur perhaps between Goosen on 11 and Nicholson in 12, and it's happened. The lead is now three. I think he hit a perfect putt for what he read, and it really broke for some reason. So Nicholson, two bogeys in the last three. Just one under par. 
Let's go to 18, pick up Spencer Levine. And how big has this performance been for this 20-year-old uh, amateur? Top 15 exempt into next year's U.S. Open. As his dad looks on, by the time it shakes out, he's currently tied for 12, top eight, get invited to next year's Masters. What a week it has been for Spencer Levine. That's great stuff. That's a heck of a round today, I'll tell you that. Dust did a lot of pros, I can tell you that. Spencer will see at Pioneer's number two next year. Yeah. 14. Jeff Maggard from the right rough. Cannot shoot at the hole location today. It's right front. Just wants to put it over to the left. This is going to be real good. It's going to actually be on the green. And we haven't seen many of those here. That hole location just to the right of it is a big slope to the left. Back to 12. Else. 166. Decent line in the rough. Get out. Wants to go, came out soft, didn't jump at all. Bounce. <laughs> Ernie has played a lot of golf, hasn't he? He's hopscotched all over the world. This is the sixth straight tournament he has played. Some have been critical of the, him playing too many golf tournaments around the world, but uh, well, maybe, maybe he emulated his. Uh, Hero, a Gary Player from South Africa who traveled more maybe than anybody in history in any sport. I think it's pretty safe to say. Well, frankly, I think the golf course flustered him a little bit today. I think the golf course got under his skin some. This now from 159. It's almost a birdie shot, huh? It is. He's drawing this ball against the wind just right of the hole. You can play these shots. They're not impossible, but you've got to hit really quality shots. That's all there is to it. Well, no rest for these guys. Just still battling this golf course. Goosen's lead, biggest of the day at three, a chance to add to it. Slice putt, huh, Roger? Not, yeah, a little bit, not a lot in it, John. Phil's broke pretty good at the hole, coming the other way. Oh, <laughs> There's that break at the hole, but he saw a lot more than Roger and I saw. Far and in from here is going to get it done. Most cases, Maggard. For birdie. He's made three bogeys and a double today. Still even par, still in the tournament. To 16. Well, this a moment ago. Steve Flesh's second shot here at the par five. It's been the second easiest hole on the course today. Chases it up through the opening. And he would go on to make that putt for an eagle three to move to six over par for the championship. Go to 13. And Fred Funk in the fairway, 137 yards. This has been such a difficult shot. Mark, they get the ball up in the air. If it lands in the front, it goes dead backwards. Phil's going to be watching this one closely, I think, Murph, to see how it reacts up there. Whoa. Whoa. Wasn't a very good shot to judge by, though. No, that's a very difficult shot, ideally. And Phil said, I've been thoroughly prepared now. Ideally, put the ball out to the left of the hole, maybe even a little long, it will come back. There's a steep rise to the left, you can see over Phil's shoulder. I think he has a little advantage in that he's on the upslope. He's just 121 yards. He can draw it back toward this hole location. Round mound between himself and the hole. That's a good play, it hit right in that mound. Well done. He did his he did his homework. Phil said this is not going to be like Augusta where somebody can shoot 67, come from behind and win the tournament. Boy, was he right. 
Jeff Maggard, T at 14, elevated T, coming down the hill. And he is still in this championship, but yes, he is. Par. But that's not going to help. That's right behind that tree, maybe, maybe just okay on a downslope. He could, he could be really outstanding because he'll tell you, he sort of will tell you like, like it is, and that'd be refreshing in itself. So, but that's a tough job. It's one thing to talk about tennis, another thing to talk about politics. But he'll be interesting to listen to. Thirteen. Oh, there and starts right, going right. Not good here. Nope. That's trouble. Shake of the head. The wind blowing right across them today there, Roger. Come forward to the green. Funks, Munker shot. Is that a rock probably, Bob? I'm telling you, it's amazing. And, and this is gonna just continue to go. I don't know how far. He got a little powder burn on that one, I think. Well, the players can't imagine that they can hit a bunker shot as high as he hit that and have it land. And you could hear it up in the grandstands when he hit the green. Let's go to 18. <coughs> and the two-time U.S. Open champion Lee Jansen finishing up here. This for birdie. And to break 80. Last man to come back and win this championship. At Olympic in 98, he yeah, broke, broke Payne Stewart's heart that day and won for the second time. Five behind Payne Stewart. I tell you what, it's nice to make that birdie to shoot 79. Mm -hmm. <laughs> MetLife blimp, Snoopy 2, high above Southampton, providing the beautiful shots of this 104th U.S. Open Championship, approaching the 6 o'clock hour on a beautiful day on Long Island. While we have a chance, let's go to Jimmy Roberts. Dan, thanks very much, and uh, as we have mentioned several times, Father's Day, and a couple of people who were lucky enough to spend the day together, Spence Levine, his dad, his dad Don, his caddy today. What a remarkable performance for you. Uh, eight over par, 75 today. Have you ever seen a golf course this hard? I mean, I know you're only, what, 20 years old? That was uh, easily the hardest golf course I've ever played today. It was, um, it was quite a bit harder than the first three days. It's almost like it was a different golf course today. Uh, I played Oakmont last year in the U.S. Amateur, and this was actually harder than that golf course. And um, I've, I've never seen greens this fast. These were the fastest greens I've ever seen by about three or four feet. I mean, you're hitting putts uphill that roll five feet by, and you just tap them. I mean, I've never seen. It's literally literally like putting on, on like a hardwood floor. Almost, it is. Did you surprise yourself a little bit this week? I know you're obviously a very confident young man, but still to shoot 75 on a day like today when uh, the numbers are much, much higher than that, it's pretty good work. Yeah, it's kind of weird when you see a 75 by your score and you feel like you play pretty good. That doesn't usually happen very often, but uh, I'm uh, yeah, I'm very pleased with my week. It's uh, it's great. I had a great time. This is a great first open. It's awesome. All right. Well, congratulations to the both uh, to the both of you. And we'll see you at next year's open. Let's go out to the 13th hole. Thanks. Thank you, Jimmy. Phil Mickelson having a good look. This is a very makeable putt, but it it does rip off to the right. Just at the last. It's hard to believe, Murph, but uh, Levin's round was one of only 11 rounds of 75 or better today. Wow. Well, you know it. I mean, the folks at home certainly have got a feeling now as the day has progressed that it's just bewildering trying to figure out even three and four footers, my goodness. to get within two. Yes, sir. You can feel it in a lot of ways. Phil Mickelson definitely has done his homework. Fred Funk, by the way, pulled it from the back of the green for his par. How about that? 
What's the crowd in the background? <laughs> <laughs> That's neat, huh? Now we can watch Fred Funk's putt that I was talking about. He's a gutsy little guy. He just doesn't want to go away. Thank you very much. <laughs> Let's go down to Roger Malpe, please. Well, Retief Goosen has driven the ball in the fescue grass here at 13, and 116 yards to the hole does not have a good lie. Uh, I've seen worse, but I don't think he can play at the hole. I think he's got to look at that opening at the left. Hope he can get it up in there. Oh, and it comes out dead left. Dead left, this ball is. Oh, wow. Wow. So all of a sudden. Well, Murph, the roars you might have heard in the background posting the Mickelson score around 18. And right. so word has filtered up toward the clubhouse. And we go to Maggard at 15. 137 left. Tough to get this the right distance. It's got to be short, you'd think, from that lie. And it's way short, and it's kicked it to the left. But uh, he does have enough green to work with. That's a pretty good miss, uh, really. T at 14. A fairway that only one in four guys have hit. Phil choosing uh, three metal there. Ideally, put it right at that bunker over his head, Johnny. He's going to play that going draw. You can see he's set down the left side and going to hit it with that power hook. Wind is blowing left to right. That is a beauty. That's a three wood that went about 310 yards. Yeah, it's very important drive, Johnny. 12 yards wide right there. That's that's a pretty narrow shot. What a shot. Big time golf shot under that pressure. Well, he rode the wind, like you said. A little advantage being left-handed there. Get a going hook. He's played a lot of shots. He's played shots into the wind and with the wind. And At 15, Maggard working from the bunker. He's in third by himself, four behind. He's had a lot of great stuff happen to him on the putts he's made. Long bunker shot. Came out a little hot. Uh, that ball was Ooh. definitely a rock. Did you hear the click it made? And it came off with actually overspin. These bunkers, in case you didn't tune in earlier, are full of little pebbles. See how Maggard has fallen off. Roger Mulpey, what do we see? Well, we could have a situation uh, that Retief faced back on the fifth hole where he doesn't try to put the ball on the green. Uh, he has missed all the tall grass, and it's where the gallery has blocked in front of these grandstands, so he has a clean lie. That's not the problem when he's pitching into the wind, which helps, but this is a terrible angle to play from. It's right. very difficult to hold the green going that direction, so he may just chip it in front of the screen. Yeah, you don't want to go over because it falls down some 25, 30 feet away. As we pull back, just over that bunker there is a, a slope that goes pitching straight down to the hole. He cannot throw it up in the air and stop it on the green if he lands in there. Could be a big swing here with Mickelson's birdie on this hole and possibly a double bogey here. Oh, you're not kidding. It already is a big swing, isn't it? He's taking a short, choppy little swing there, Roger, and he's looking straight at the hole. Maybe he'll try to skirt that bunker and hope he could get it on the right front corner, but uh, I, I don't believe he can do that. I really don't. He's got 37 yards to the hole. Trying to put that mental picture in his mind before he goes. He's making big moves. It looks like he's going to try to flop it up into the air. Which he's done. That is a beautiful shot. Wow, what a beautiful play. 
just can't hit it any better than that from that position. If he took a small bucket out there. Well, let's take a look at that. Fooled our announcers a little bit, being that good. So come down here, flip it up there, see how he cupped his left wrist, and look at how high he looked to see this shot. That's just perfectly played. Those are the kind of shots that can win you another open championship, Retief. It's not over yet, though, obviously. Maggard from another bunker, his fourth. And a ways away for Bogey. He's had a wild round, hasn't he? Oh, There's been a lot round. of wild rounds out here, but Maggard in particular among the leaders. Mark your calendars for Sunday, July 11th. Next Tell Cup racing from Chicago. Sunday, July 11th. Ernie over at 13. The second shot just came up short, as so many have today. And Ernie is just not in the shop today. He's having a rough, rough time. And back in 14 fairway, Phil Mickelson leaning on the bag, having a good discussion about the shot. Two great drives, huh? Two terrific drives, Johnny. To reset here, the, the whole location is right front, and to the right of that is a pitch that goes, there you see it, it'll go to the viewer's right, just kicks dead right. Just right here, it goes this way. Yes, it goes right to the right, down to the hole. So you want to stay away from that because it's just so firm over there. I've seen a lot of shots just pitch right over the green. Hey, Murph, by the way, Maggard made that bogey at 15. Wow. Yeah, he's at plus one. What would be the perfect shot, Murph? Well, if I had the opportunity, I'd be 10, 12 feet left of the hole. And underneath it? Yes. Yes, underneath it. Big hop. That's a wonderful shot. He can make it from there. He's probably worried that it backed up more than that, but it's okay. Well, they're cheering so much, you, you know, you can't tell of really where it is. I mean, anything airborne, they're going to get excited. Well, they're cheering because they've been sitting here for a long time yeah. and haven't seen many good ones. Fred now got a good, good look, good feel, good lesson from that shot. Needs that same hop. Not bad, didn't quite bounce as he expected. Now back to Goosen for a par. And write this one down as one of the best you've ever seen. You're not kidding there. Putting now from about six feet doesn't do a whole lot. But hit a beautiful third shot, obviously, Murph, but got a little fortune to that ball and it just short and hopped straight up in the air. If it had bounded out forward uh, pretty good on this first hop. Right. I, I think it would have gone across the green. Yes, it definitely would have. I've seen guys putting from the back area there and put it right off the green. Time does that look like a par? It never <laughs> looked like a par in the rough, in the gallery. And watch how this ball just finds the edge. Whew. But it's okay now. And up by 14 green. Fred Funk now, Mark, from the front, taking away a few pebbles off the putting surface there. Well, this will be about, I think, Phil Mickelson will have a good look at, Murph. On a similar line. Should turn left as it gets up to the hole. 
Yeah, it really does. As a matter of fact, most of the shots I've seen from here, or putts, if you will, uh, uh, they have gone up. And then all of a sudden, about two feet from the hole, it really starts to slow down, and it just rips off to the left. Big sigh of relief there from Fred. Nicholson having a look. He saw just how much that broke, and, and Fred hit it pretty firm, Murph. Yes, he did. He tried to take a little to break out, but he's left himself some five feet. Now for par from a position that I've yet to see a person make a putt. Phil got a very good look at that. These greens redefine the word LAG, don't they? Murph, I mean, you just can't afford to say, I'm going to make it and knock it that far by because you might miss this one and knock it five feet by the other way, uh, Funk might. You know what I'm saying? I, I do, uh, Johnny. I've, I've played the tour for 36 years, and I've never seen a faster green than this one. Goosen now on the tee at 14. Fifth time he's used an iron off the tee today. Very well. This is a good looking shot. Starts down the left side, cutting toward the center. And it's a beauty. Johnny, I've always felt like Phil Mickelson was a better putter on putts that had a lot of break to him than, than he was actually a straight putter. Well, he's looking out to the right. Feed it in there. enough yeah oh my goodness don't you know he thought he made that one look just like Goosen's putt in the last hole and his one in and Phil's lipped out wow let's take another look at that as it rolls up and Phil Just says I can't believe this doesn't go see in see how far out he plays it and it is dying 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 oh. tilts a little to the left but refuses to go Mickelson has been so close in this championship through the years, close today, and also close a couple of years ago at Beth Page. Remember this putt down the hill at the par 3 17th? And the noise they made for Phil, one of two second places in this championship. Is today his day in the U.S. Open, as you saw his birdie putt roll in there at 13. Crowd around the green at 18, waiting for the outcome of this 104th U.S. Open Championship. The fourth in history staged here at storied Shinnecock and shaping up into a dramatic ending. Goosen on top by two. Mickelson just barely missed making his second straight birdie to perhaps pull within one, but they remain the only two players under par as we get back out to 14. And Ernie Els is in trouble. D-E-D -E -D dead. This is just a pitch out. A hack out, actually. Okay, it stays just in the first cut. What a big turn of events, Roger, when Retief was able to make that par back on 13 after Phil made birdie. You know, Bob and uh, Roger, Goosen's only hit five greens out of 13. It's not like, but the nice thing he's done is his good ones have been real good. Have you noticed that, Raj? The ones he hit good have been birdies. I agree, and, and his bad ones have been pretty manageable. Yeah. You know, he's managed his ball well. He hasn't really put it in places that you just can't do anything. Just two times, what, five and number 13. Right. There we see greens in regulation 14. First round, 11, 11, and five out of 13 today. I think that's why Kirk Triplett stuck his dog out because if you're not running the top of your game, run by it only hit three or four or five greens in regulation out here. Yeah, it's uh, so abnormal uh, because even when you hit a good shot, it's so hard to capitalize on. Right in between. You just got to think about where you want to be. Caddy 
he just said, let's think about where we want to be. That's exactly. the other thing. You don't shoot at a lot of pins, do you, Roger? You just try to get it on the green if you can. Well, that's exactly right. And he said they're in between clubs here, so they're oh. still debating. Right. Mickelson, T at 15. Four holes left. Yeah, Got to hit this fairway into the wind. Very high shot. Going to come down real soft, but at least in the center. Oh, man, just right dead center. Great shot there because that fairway drops down 58 feet from the tee, and that wind's got plenty of time to gobble it up and do something nasty to it. Back to Goosen at 14. They selected a nine iron here. Wind is left to right, slightly down the hole. Come out of it a little. Well, he's got it going right, going at the bunker. And he catches that greenside bunker. I think that's a mistake there, John. Ooh. Boy, that's very that's too buried. Roger. It is downhill the, from that bunker to the hole. Just uh, you talk about an unforced error, McEnroe. That is it right there. That I had to keep that ball left of the hole. That was a bad shot. He's not going to have much stance either, Roger. It doesn't appear. Well, he pulled a mystery. Out on the last hole. Gonna need a lot more magic here. Man, you talk about that little gift to Phil. That uh, was it. That was a that was a mental error, even going anywhere around that hole. Ernie next. That's from 124. Bringing it in a little right to left. There you see the kick that we're referring to. That landed, of course, five or six yards short of the green. But you up to 16. Jeff Maggard second, 247 yards. Take an iron and chase it down there, but that's going right. <laughs> Got a puff of puff of dust. Yeah. I haven't seen that one before. I haven't either, but. Is not good in the primary cut of rough with a very bad angle to shoot at the flag. Take a look at Retief's scorecard. Started out with a beautiful birdie on the first. Three bogeys and then came back with another birdie. And he is not going to like this pancake, fried egg, when he gets there. Well, like I said, he'd be a good poker player because he just walked up to it like. Yep. Okay. The goose is not going to like that egg. No. Especially not fried. Well, this has to go up fast. It has to come out very soft. And out of a fried egg lie like that, I don't know. After the last hole, you hate to make a call now, all right? <laughs> Well, I tell you what, I remember yesterday, Phil made an improbable play at 17 from a buried line. Uh, this one looks even harder than that one. Ernie now going to chip it up, going to put it up. And this through almost 30 feet of fairway here. There's an idea of the speed, so you can really imagine just how difficult this bunker shot will be. Roger, I asked uh, Gary about an hour ago what he thought these greens were running, and he did a little bit of a Bill Clinton. I was just curious what you think they're running. I'm going to say they're up over 13, in my opinion. It's, it's certainly in spots, all over. Certainly this green is. Yeah, you bet. One thing I noticed about Retief when he does miss a green, he looks at all options. You can see his eyes looking, oh, where do I land it? What if I put it over here? He's thought about where I want to miss it, where I want to putt from. He's definitely looking left there, isn't he? Yeah, he's trying to play left of the hole here. He's just trying to set up the next shot. He's not going to try to play it at the hole, I don't believe. Yeah. Uh oh. What was that? Didn't even take any time once he got over the ball. Right? Well, he was just trying to pop it out and just let it run and scoot to the front left part of the green, but uh, didn't carry it far enough, obviously. Oh, and he's left the same terrain right in front of him. 
Over to Mickelson. Maybe an opening here from 120. Be careful, it's tough front right hole location. Oh yeah, oh yeah, birdie time. And with the troubles that Goosen is having at 14, it just got really interesting. Yeah, he could have the lead after this hole. Back to Goosen at 14. Well, Roger, he's taking a look at two or three options here. You know, kind of a nasty little line ball above his feet. Yeah. And of course, he's going to have to land this well short and well right and just hope it creeps onto the green. Definitely has to pitch it six, eight feet out to the right of the hole. but that's how fast that green is. Let's go back and take a look at the third shot here, Johnny. Watch this, just picks it up and when he just sticks it in the ground, no fall through whatsoever. It just caught that last little bit of rough. He's playing it to the left to be smart, but he hit way too far behind it. He hit like six inches behind the ball. On that little explosion, you want to hit about three if you can, so it'll pop up and out. Yeah, if you're going to hit that far behind it, you need to have a lot more speed than he had there. Yeah, you can't quit on it. <laughs> well, it's gotten very interesting real quick. It was already interesting. Yeah, but two putt here for uh, double, and then you, Mickelson would just two putt for par, and we'd have a tie game here. Yeah, but Mickelson's got a very easy birdie putt. Just he played the hole perfectly. That would give him the lead, maybe, but let's not get too far ahead of ourselves here. There are some birdie holes. There's some real exciting exchanges that are going to go on here, and then the next hole, and then the five par, which you can make eagle on. Well, Murph, this putt has to move a little bit to the right as it loses speed, does it not? Yes. It definitely does. The last uh, two feet, it just rips off to the right. What I've seen most is that the player who gets it to the hole, he misses it on the top left side, and then, Roger, it goes four and five feet past the hole. Very difficult putt. Oh, this looks good. Oh, my. What a save. How about those two saves at 13 and 14, 14. Be it a bogey. Kept his cool, stayed right with it. Boy, oh boy. Well, his lead is down to one, up to 16. The birdie putt for Jeff Maggard. Very quick, moving left early and then back right at the end. Just get it started. Here it comes down the hill. Work left to remain at one over. Back to 15. Where Mickelson has a birdie putt to tie for the lead. He has looked at it from every conceivable angle, Johnny. There is not much break to it. I mean, you can't get a much better spot than uh, where he is right now to make a, what is it, about a eight foot birdie putt, seven I'd, foot? Yeah, I'd call it about eight feet. Had a birdie at 13, barely missed the one at 14. Another good look here. When I first saw him come out today, Jenny, I wondered if it was a coincidence that he wore a green shirt today. Well, remember that little circle drill that he did and does every day? This is the same length that he practices. Time for the lead in the U.S. Open. Nicholson, three holes left. It very easily could have been three straight birdies here in this stretch, but Nicholson, two in the last three holes. Back to even on his round. And he does not know that he's tied for the lead at the moment, I don't think. That was a perfect putt, just a perfect putt. He 
Yeah. Well, got to hand it to both these guys. Goosen's doing great stuff, and so is Phil. And now, I don't know if it's posted yet. If it does, I bet there's going to be a big yell at Mark Rolfing. Well, they're just getting ready to change the number now. Mickelson, of course, has gone back to the 16th tee. When it posts, you'll hear another little Goosen up the hill onto the teeing ground here. Has had good success with 15. Sure has, but. Well, might be a tee shot going down the right side. It's going to miss right. And that is not a good spot on the down slope with this right hole location. He's got no chance from there, really. I don't even know if he can hit the green. He's had amazing recovery skills today, but how much longer can you just keep going to it? Nicholson continuing the high fiving around Shinnecock. On his way to a hole, uh, Gary Koch, which got the best of him uh, nine years ago in his intention in this championship, playing it in plus six, but it's a new Phil Mickelson, isn't it? <laughs> It is indeed, Dan. He has played the hole in one under par so far this week. And uh, the real key here is the tee shot. As we look down at the hole, got to avoid that big bunker down the right-hand side, very deep rough on the left. Has been the most difficult fairway on the entire golf course to hit. And they just posted the score at 18, Gary. wind coming across from the player's right and really not hurting. Uh, I don't believe Mickelson has to hit driver. He can still reach the green with less than a driver off the tee. I think that's what he's going to do, Gary. He said at the beginning of the week he was going to play this hole differently than 1995. Of course, back then he played it six over par, lost by four shots. He's played it much better this week. Mark, so Phil does know he's tied for the lead. He heard the roar back here at 15 when they changed the board, so we must think that. Didn't feel comfortable all over it, as you can see. down the left hand side just needs a soft bounce is all well it's not going to get it mark oh it's going to be in the primary cut but it looked uh, like it set up oh what a lie okay. yeah i think that was one of those johnny that just bounced up right at the end and the grass is supporting it pretty nicely sounds like a really good lie over there sounds like a really good 17. Jeff Maggard with a six iron. Fans like it. Oh, that's a beauty. That's a beauty. So Maggard will have a chance to get the even par. Head to 18. A moment ago, Corey Pavin, the champ from 95, is third to this par four. Pavin began the day at plus one, plus nine today. A tough trip around Shinnecock in 04 this final day. But that might come back. Yep. That would have been some birdie. Par for Pavin, 79. Still with a tough play that has plagued him through the years of victory here at Shinnecock. You can be sure about that. Goosen now at 15. Well, I think Johnny's first assessment of the lie was correct. It's on a downhill slope. It's very heavy. Uh, I, I just don't know how he could get this ball on the green. I think if he could carry the front bunker, which I think is iffy, uh, I don't believe he could hold the green. And otherwise, I, I think he's got to lay it up. I just maybe he'll try to get it in that front bunker. I don't know if that's really where he wants it either, though, for that matter. 
I think the front bunker, the very one right on line with the flag stick, would be a pretty good spot. And um, this is just a really a crazy shot. That's all there is to it, huh, Roger? There's it's a bad angle. Yeah. It's, you know, I mean, the whole thing, it's just not good. Left bunker is not even bad. But... You can see that low kind of shot he had, just trying to get it up into that bunker. And he's done that. So Goosen will take his chances from there. In the meantime, Mickelson at 16, tied for the lead in the national championship. At the 17th, while we were away, Jeff Maggard for a birdie two. Should turn to his right. Oh, Maggard with his fifth birdie of the day. Four bogeys, a double bogey. He's at even par for the championship. Maggard Shinnecock adventure. <laughs> oh, man, how about five birdies today? That's incredible. It is because there's only been 87 birdies and there's 66 players, Gary, so average guy's making like 1.3 birdies or something, so he's run the table. All right, decision time, Mark, for uh, Phil Mickelson. Yeah, definitely, Gary. This, I think, is going to be a defining moment in the championship. He's got a tremendous lie over here in the rough, actually a better lie than if he were in the fairway to go for the green. He does have 258 yards, though, and I think he may just decide to lay it up. Well, he's got out of what appears to be a relatively long iron, so I'm wondering if he thinks he can chase the ball, land it about 30 yards short of the green, and try to chase it up into the front bunker. I think Fred Funk is actually away in the rough on the right-hand side. Well, Funk is away. We will move back to 15. And remember Goosen laying up in that bunker. This is third. A little bit up on the upslope, so a good lie. Cut it to the best place he possibly could. Interesting, this is the bunker that Raymond Floyd hold it from in 86. No, he didn't like that, came out soft. It's also the hole, Roger, where in 95, Corey Pavin uh, birdied in the final round to take the outright lead for the first time that day, nine years ago. Well, he's not making it easy on himself, I can tell you that in the last hour. Back to 16. Well, Phil Mickelson called Jim McKay, the caddy, back over, and they reconsidered here. Got a right to left wind, right? It's Correct. a right to left wind, and of course, this little bit of rough will take the spin off the ball. This one is high and left. All right, that is fine. Wow, good friendly kick. That'll be fine, although we'll have to pitch across that bunker. And we've seen guys have success by throwing it past the hole and letting the slope bring it back. Back to 15. Goosen prowling around a par attempt to try and stay at three under and tied with Mickelson. Roger. You know, I don't see a whole lot in this putt. I really don't from this angle. It may die a little left, but I don't see much. This green really looks brown. Well, if he wins his championship, Roger, it's going to be because of the one putts. He's already had eight one putts, and I mean pretty good length ones. That's another one. for the championship, Johnny? 31 cuts for the championship, Latif. These are tough greens. I don't know if anybody told you that. <laughs> Just heard Roger a moment ago say they were kind of brown. And tough, tough day. Got to hand it to him, boy. You talk about putts the last three holes. Looks like he could have been five or six over the last three holes. Well, Goosen got the blade going early. Remember this? Long time ago at the very first hole, long birdie putt on the way to open things up and get him to six under. Bogey the second to drop to five, and then he just started making par saves. Just a perfect pace there at the fifth. Another try at 13. Oh, he got in that left edge. And then for Bogey at 14, 
Again, only five of 15 greens hit in regulation today for Goosen. 21 putts in the ninth one putt he added to the list at 15 just a moment ago to stay tied for the lead with three holes left. Looking for his second open title, the champion from Southern Hills in 01. Man. Well, I said when we started the show, it looked like maybe 300 would Hopefully. do it, but I'm not so sure it isn't going to go to four. But of course, I got to play 17 and 18 after they possibly birdie 16, huh, Gary? Well, it is the hole to do it, Johnny. No question about that. Second easiest hole on the golf course today, playing under par, 4.84 stroke average. Actually seen a couple of eagles, Mark Kalkovecchia and Steve Flesh. Oh, we got a three hole tournament, you know, three, three hole championship here, a small little three holer. Goosen, uh, a little more aggressive than Mickelson going with the driver. Wind coming from the right, maybe against slightly. Aiming down the right side, huh, Gary? Take it right over that bunker with a little draw. Well, he's taking it across that bunker, but it is not turning much. Oh, also finds the primary cutter rough. Just have to see about the lie. That wasn't a very good lie. Didn't look like it. Looked like it settled down. See Fred Funk's third shot in there, very close. And we'll show it to you right now. It's from 84 yards. It's just a moment ago. So Sandwich, he likes it all the way, and he should. All right, now this will be a good way to find out how much homework Mickelson's done here because the way to get this ball close Johnny is to really throw the ball back behind the hole. Well I was watching his eyes and his eyes were looking over to this corner over exactly. here. Exactly. You can see it but past the hole and it'll make a U-turn. That's exactly right. That's the way to do it right there. Catch the slope. Come right back down to the hole. Leaves it below the cup. I would say he's very well prepared. Well, Gary, we've said it. The week before Westchester, and he dropped balls all over the golf course. I mean, they, he and his caddy, Jim McKay, dropped balls all over the golf course, different positions, trying to figure out every possible play that could come up in three trips around this golf course, and that's been the formula for Augusta, it was the formula for Shinnecock. Well, the thing I liked, the thing I liked about it, he wasn't seduced by Funk's shot, who went straight at it. He went the other way, like Gary said. Well, this is Maggard at 18, and Solo third. Needs a kind of like a Tiger Eagle landing here to get it to two under and maybe have a shot, but it appears it's Mickelson and Goosen fighting it out by themselves. I tell you, you have two guys out there out of three, and the three guys on the leaderboard, Chief Goosen is one putt in everything, and this man here, Jeff Maggart, 23 putts through 17 holes, which if you'd have told that to the rest of the field, they'd say, no way. Well, back to 16. Nicholson and Jim McKay, his caddy, looking this putt over from every conceivable angle. We'll go back to Maggard quickly. And Maggard's now ready. Very easy shot, 149, right up the draw. I mean, that's a birdie shot there, and he's kept it yeah, a little bit on the side, but that's that's makeup the way he's putting. I tell you, it's going to be another top 10 for Maggard, and he's going to tie his best finish in an open here. He was third and 02 at Beth Page. Back to 16. Well, we talk about Goose and making putts. Bill Nicholson's only had 22 for 15 holes, so he's made his share as well. Uphill, and I think the putt should move a little bit to his right. Yeah. 
Yes. Mickelson, the four under par. That's three birdies in his last four holes. A little reminiscent of the back nine at Augusta. Yeah, he came out here today, Gary, saying, you know, there's not going to be any real big birdie binge, birdie fest on the back nine here at Shinnecock like Augusta. Well, that could have easily been four in a row. Remember how close sure. that one came at 14. Fred Funk taps in his putt for birdie. One more look at it. Just catches the right corner and drops. Uh, very good decision making. Put the second shot in the right place. Played the third shot perfectly and converts the putt. Watch the crowd reaction. Oh, they are behind Mr. Mickelson. Well, just an hour ago, Phil Mickelson had dropped a shot, was one under, and uh, had a three-stroke deficit to Goosen, and it looked like, well, it's not going to happen. Not going to make those birdies on those tough holes. He was even the guy that said, you're not going to make those birdies on the finishing holes, and guess what? He's played them three under par, and it's he might have a, he has a one-shot lead, but Goosen has got a tough lie on 16, not that he can't uh, knock it out to a good yardage and make birdie himself with a sideboard there. But it's all about finishing with two strong holes. Uh, yesterday, uh, if you remember, he bogeyed 17 and 18. He hit it in the left bunker on this hole and made a weak bogey at 18. And uh, so he needs to get that out of his head, obviously. He's, oh, really? Okay. He's struggled on the par threes, too, Johnny. He's plus four for the week. Yeah, I do. Okay. What's the best shot, Gary? Well, ideally, just to the very front right of the green, and the, everything will kick left One's, right toward the hole. 174, right? 174, back against the wind. Which way should it be pushing it? There are so many people around the tee back here that they tend to block the wind a little bit, Gary, especially where Phil is standing. But if anything, it's maybe a little from the left, pushing it a little right. He's looking right out in this area here, playing a draw. All right, a much better lie this time. It's not buried like it was yesterday. He looks pretty undaunted, doesn't he, about the whole thing? Yeah. He's having fun, I think. Well, he's two for two in sand saves today, so. Look at that look. Yeah. It's, it's good luck. All right. While Mickelson was playing, Retief Goosen decided to just lay the ball up down the fairway from a very thick line. Because you do have that yep. sideboard to work with with a short iron, right? No Garrett? question. Yes. Yes. You can you can use that same slope that uh, Mickelson did. So we go back to 17T and Fred Funk. cheerleader for Phil. I know that. Good. It's been a great pairing for Phil. Uh, Fred has just cheered him on all the way, Johnny. They've been very complimentary of each other. Needs to get up also. Fred's hitting a lot of shots left. Retief Goosen ready with his third. Roger. Okay. 112 yards left of the hole. Had a really a very good lie, I thought. Was very fortunate uh, with the lie he caught back off the edge of the fairway for his second. But 
elected layup. I thought he had the kind of line he could get a five or a six or maybe run in and scoot it up onto the green or into the front bucket. Instead, decided to lay it up here. Got a hook to win, though. Right to left. Sand iron here, starting right, turning left toward the hole. Pretty good looking shot. Oh, hold on. Okay. We have about 12 feet left up the hill. And 18. This was a moment ago, Maggard's birdie attempt to end his day. Look at the break on this. Would have gotten him to one under. But now his par putt. That is a tough way to end. All week long, people have been missing that putt. Still, though, it'll be a seventh top 10, the last 11 U.S. Opens. Third place by himself, back over to 17. And Mark, uh, Fred Funk, first to play. I'm not sure that they decided. Phil's looking back at the 16th green. He thought he was away. Looks like Fred Funk maybe is going to go. Just a little pitch up the hill for Funk. Mickelson's got a good lie in the bunker. Actually, not a difficult bunker shot other than the fact that it's the 71st hole of the U.S. Open. Softly. Gary, it appears from the pitch mark in the bunker that the ball did come very close to burying in there. Well, there's a lot of sand in there. You can see as he goes back down into that bunker there, in an area where the, the sand is very heavy, very thick. I think because it is on the upslope and because you mentioned there is a lot of sand, the only tendency here would be to leave it short. Done. Look at it, textbook form. Takes the club nice straight back, picks it up a little quickly, and it really accelerates through the sand. See how deep the bunker is. You see the top of Phil's head, and he's over six feet tall. That's a great Isn't shot. Isn't that something? Look at all the little sand granules coming out of there. All right, back at 16, huge putt, Roger, for Latif Goosen. And certainly a makeable putt uphill. Move to the right. No question, he knows what happened ahead of him as he walked up the fairway. Their roar was tremendous. Man, the golf world's been lucky at the Masters, and they're being lucky again at the Open. It's a great, great finish, two in a row. Goosen has birdied this par 5 16th each of the last two rounds to share the lead at four Yes! Man, are these guys making some cuts. Crucial punts. Wow. Goosen's putter just remains on fire. Ten one putts. It's one thing to one putt them when you're in tenth place, but it's another thing to one putt them when they're for the lead. Mark. Phil certainly knows what happened. Gary, he was watching that 16th green very intently. He's got about four and a half feet now, a little bit on the quick side. Should turn just a little to his right. Gary, can he putt this with authority? 
Yeah, I think you can. It's a little bit downhill, but it's not uh, it's not dramatically downhill, Johnny. Great show at that clubhouse, the leaderboard. Not much you can say about that, Gary, but he's kind of not a gimme coming back. No, certainly not. Not with this kind of pressure. I think he picked out a line where he was going to just more trundle it down, and he happened to hit it with a little authority. What's this inside right? Yes, should go just just ever so slightly back to his left. A lot of pressure on this one when you miss it, the first one. How quiet did it just get here at Shinnecock? attempt thinking it's going to break to the right and I think Johnny you're correct I think he picked out a line that he was just going to try to ease it down there and he hit it too hard now coming back trying to keep it inside the hole just never just, moved no you know just when you thought the short putts uh, he was making them all he did it at the Masters and you know, it's always been his bugaboo in these major championships and all of a sudden it comes back a lot of people in shock right now, but it's not over. Goosen could bogey 17 without any problem, and Nicholson could birdie 18. If you ever needed the crowd, it's right now as he makes the walk over to 18. But you can tell this has just been a slap in the face to the whole gallery here. Mickelson's double at 17. Well, the field that played earlier could tell you how easy it is to make double. Mickelson walks to the tee at 18, back to 17. Makes par here, and he's got a great cushion, doesn't he, Gary? Yeah. Um, two shots with one to play would uh, be pretty sweet. Seven iron here. You better get all of that, Roger. He's got it turning a little left of the hole. You better get all oh, of that. Oh, this looks like it's bunker bound, maybe. Oh, yes, it is. Well, Goosen in the bunker. Mickelson with double. He's got the two shot lead. We'll be right back. Mickelson now suddenly behind by two off the tee at the home hole. Dead downwind. Getting a three medal. 450 yard par four. It's a good one, and he's got it. He's going to have to birdie this hole. Only four birdies at 18 today. Two months ago, a birdie in the 72nd hole at the Masters. Got him his first major. He birdied five out of the last seven at Augusta. And he needs a little help from Retief Goosen out of this bunker. And Retief hasn't been too successful out of the bunkers. Today, has he, Gary? No, he hasn't. He's uh, been in four. He's only gotten it up and down once. Roger, the lie appears to be good. It is good. It's a, a deep bunker, but uh, he's missed it on the right side of the green, obviously. He has the room to get this ball close. I think if he plays a good shot. Uh, 
would say he played a good one. He's been clutch, Gary, that putt he made on the last hole. Mm -hmm. All that pressure for the United States Open. Well, again, guys, good management. Hands behind the ball, just picks it up very rhythmically and released it beautifully at the bottom of Gary. Yeah, he did, and I think he had a little luxury that Mickelson didn't have. He could land it just out of the bunker and let it release down to the hole. Mickelson it seemed had to carry the ball farther. So. Yeah, he's a cool customer. Up to 18. Fred Funk, his second. Phil will get a good look. Fred's 194, Mickelson 192. to the right, trying to come back. Uh oh oh He's saying, don't go oh. in that bunker. Okay, Fred. <laughs> yeah, where are you out, out here? Well, this is that high cut shot he's been working on all year that's been so successful for him, huh, Mark? It is. The only problem is the ball is just a little bit above his feet. Uh, he can handle it. That's the shot. He wants something to come down softly. Really, to get it close, Johnny, you pretty much have to land it left of the flag, don't you? You see, you see Makai as caddy saying, hit that fade. You see that little hand gesture, little fade gesture? Doesn't have to play that shot, but I think it's the correct one. Pavins. Close. 17. Bruce for his par to remain ahead by two. Shot lead. Well, the MetLife Blimp Snoopy 2 is under the command of Captains Matthew St. John and Chad Palmer with a little help from co pilot Snoopy. They've been working hard to provide these aerial shots of today's U.S. Open Championship. And great job by our guys up there high in the sky. perhaps more so than they would have been had filled that double 17, but this has just been a new benchmark set for popularity in golf in this modern era for sure. And maybe, maybe the U.S. Open Championship on Father's Day for Phil Mickelson will have to wait another year. So close at 99 when Payne Stewart salvaged the par. You all remember Payne grabbing the face of Phil Mickelson and saying, you're gonna love being a father as his first child came the next day. In the meantime, Goosen, the man of the moment, on the tee at 18. 
little surprising with this club. I think he's going with the driver. He's going to make this thing into a short par four or maybe a colossal mistake. He just killed it. It's hard to get swing. This ball going down the center of the fairway, John. It's just a matter of if it'll stay there. That's a pretty gutsy shot there. It'll go off the fairway, but in the light stuff, I think. Perfect angle to this back left flag. Couldn't place it out there any better. Up to the green. Funk and Nicholson await. Funk to play first here. two holes, Johnny, have been such contrast to what we've been seeing in this championship and the crowd support of Mickelson. It's almost like a feeling we saw just uh, down the island here west when uh, Smarty Jones got caught by Birdstone at the Belmont. I mean, there was just so many people pulling for that horse to pull off the triple crown. And here Mickelson with a chance at the Grand Slam. It's been a similar type of feeling, but it's not not over yet. If he can knock this in some improbable way, you never know. It's going to hit it way out in, in this area here. Get in the hole! How's it looking? So there will be no birdie at this major championship in the open like there was at Augusta a couple of months ago. It's a great putt, just a foot too hard. Yeah, if it would have been a little easier to have taken the break and you would have heard one of the loudest roars ever. The it crowd was, wasn't it was looking uh, good at hoping. halfway. Look at the crowd in the back. Oh. As Mickelson seems destined for his third runner-up finish in this championship. I have to say the crowds have, this week have been just fantastic. That's all there is to it. Fred Funk for par. It's a great scene, isn't it? It is. That's a wonderful shot. With our lump up overhead. Funk had the lead by himself uh, yesterday late in the day, almost 5.30 and 77 today. Still though tie for sixth, his best U.S. Open finish in 16 appearances for the man who turned 48 on Monday. And Funk in sixth alone. Now Mickelson for his par. the hill, not too tough of a putt, maybe inside left. Caps off a week you will not forget. The Masters was memorable. This was just something we've never seen a golfer treated like Phil Mickelson was from the very first time he went to the first tee on Thursday. Well, let's get back to our seems like champion. Well, I remember Southern Hills yeah. three years ago where things got wacky. Phil 
Nicholson played the 17th and 18th holes this weekend in plus four. So a bogey five will get the job done for Goosen. I'll tell you, that's a great feeling, but if you're the player, you don't think it's that easy until you get this on the green somewhere. Well, he's got 153 to the hole, one to help and good lie. I guess if, if you keep it short of the hole and right, you win, don't you, Jim? Pretty much. You'd think so, unless you blow that first putt by. Maybe four jingle it real quick. All I'm saying is he can't be hanging back in there. We got a hole. I wouldn't imagine. Point one, hit it. Point two. There's nothing behind it, so I'm going to pin this. The wind has really laid down in the last okay. 10 minutes. I don't think you needed to get back then. You're saying, okay, time you're doing the right thing. Center of the green. Yeah, good job. Surprised he took it in there that deep, Johnny. Didn't have much spin on that ball. Seems like he sort of just didn't pinch it, but it's not bad. Well, he played a little nine and elected to keep it down as opposed to hitting a hard wedge and getting it up in the air, which his caddy preferred. Well, he's chewing on something there. Goose at a three putt away from winning another title. Yeah. Ernie else has been with his fellow countrymen every step of the day. It's not been Ernie's day. 136. Yeah, Ernie's looking at the big 8 0 if he doesn't birdie. A couple of uh, major championships that'll be tough to stomach for Ernie in totally different ways. Yeah, it wasn't his day. That's that start. That's about a good relief as you can have here. Pretty straight putt. Pretty neat stuff for Goosen to walk with his uh, teenage pal, Ernie Else, and say, Ernie, I'm going to match you with another U.S. Open title. The story is well documented when uh, Retief was 15 years old, struck by lightning, burned the clothes off of his body. His mom said he emerged from the whole uh, event a much humbler, quieter person. But there was a man watching back in South Africa named Theo Goosen, Retief's father, who was the first to put a club in his hands. He said, I never made life easy for my kids. I never spoiled them. In fact, he put a contraption on Retief's head when he was practicing golf and said, your head's not going to move. And he still says today, watch. Retief said, it never moves. I mean, very involved in the cultivation of his uh, son's golfing career. And it was at uh, Southern Hills where they shared a tear together on the phone. His dad cried like a baby, he said, when Retief finally put that uh, championship away at Southern Hills. And what a difference the three years does make. Remember the unexpected three putt by Goosen on the 72nd hole. The funny thing is the next day, he one putts 11 times. So he did the same kind of putting today as he did in that playoff. Mark Brooks. Different kind of player than Mickelson to be sure here. Moments away from putting away another U.S. Open title. Quiet, reserved, goes about his business. It's 
trying to become just the fourth foreign-born player to win multiple U.S. Open titles. His good friend Ernie won. Willie Anderson at the turn of the century, who won four, and then Alex Smith right around the same time. This is pretty good company here that Goosen is about to join. This putt is a putt that they can hardly hit it inside of six feet, so he's going to have to cozy that six-footer up there, which is what you want to do and just win by one if that's what it takes. since Southern Hills. He and his wife, Tracy, have a 15-month-old son named Leo. Tracy's parents are here. And again, his dad, Theo, and his mom, Anne, watching back in South Africa. There were three South Africans in the final three groups in the final round of this championship. And this championship is televised, I think, in 120 countries. So golf has gotten... Pretty big. Else trying to stay away from the 80 number here. It's actually quite an easy putt. Just might move a little left. He's almost in the fall line. Just above it. be the highest round for Ernie ever in a U.S. Open, and it'll be higher by three shots. As Ernie, who began the day just two behind Goosen, now has slipped down into a tie for ninth, 11 behind. So two putts to win the championship and put it away for another South African here. Too bad Phil made, didn't make bogey on 17 because this putt right mm -hmm. here, just about everybody's misses to the right. And if this was to uh, win it, it would have been a tough two putt. And Retief Goosen is a U.S. Open champion for the second time. Tracy with son Leo. Happy Father's Day to Latif. That was clutch. Sometimes it's uh, not the man who gets the loudest ovations or makes the most noise, but Latif Goosen made it. Plenty of noise with his putter today. Just an amazing display of putting by Goosen to put away the second title. The fourth U.S. Open at Shinnecock belongs to Retief Goosen. Stay with us as Goosen goes up to the scoring trailer, just congratulated by Phil Mickelson, who finishes second in this championship for the third time. So many close calls for him. The double at 17 cost him. And it's enabled Goosen to celebrate another U.S. Open title. Just two players finishing under par, Goosen and Mickelson. Maggard solo third, 
Weir Mariyama tie for fourth. Else, tough day, 80. Jay Haas played well this week at age 50, and Tiger Woods, 0 for 8 in major championships the last two years. Plenty more from Shinnecock Hills coming up. Final putt for Goosen. Only needed two putts from there. Finishes with a par this time on the 72nd hole. No three putt at Shinnecock. It's down, all right. Back to hear from the champion, plus get some comments from Phil Mickelson in just a moment. Stay with us. Welcome back to the 104th U.S. Open. Phil Mickelson, it was an amazing day at Shinnecock Hills. Describe your emotions right now. Well, Mark, obviously I'm disappointed. I, I fought hard all day. I played some of the best golf I've ever played and still couldn't, couldn't break par, but uh, I thought if I could stay under par for the tournament, I really thought that might do it the way guys were reeling back. But boy, did Retief play well, play solid, and, and deserve to win. Your thoughts on what happened out at 17? Well, that's just, uh, I, I really don't know what to say there. I hit the putt pretty easy, and, and uh, it was downwind, and when the wind gets a hold of a ball on these greens, it just rolls it uh, quite a ways by. And I thought I hit a pretty good putt coming back and, and thought that it might move a little left, and I think the wind brought it a little right and just uh, just missed them both. But uh, I didn't think I hit the first one very hard. I, I just trickled it down there, just didn't stop. In a couple of hours, when things settle down, you've answered all the questions, what will you take away from this championship? Well, I had a I had a great great week. I had a lot of fun. And certainly, uh, this is my third second now, and and as uh, thrilling as it was at Augusta, it seems like it's uh, that much of a kind of wind taken out of you when you when you end up coming so close and playing so hard for 72 holes and coming up short. But uh, it was uh, it you know it was, I, I'm certainly not uh, what's the word? I guess I'm proud of the way I played. Just a little disappointed it wasn't enough. Congratulations on a great week. Thanks, Mark. There it is, the foreign-born U.S. Open champions, Retief Goosen with two now. Ernie Els also with two. Graham, Jacklin, and Player, and here comes the champ down the hill with the president of the USGA, Fred Ridley, moments away from the presentation for the second time. This time on a Sunday for Retief. It was on a Monday playoff in Tulsa in 0-1. Gorgeous day on Long Island. And after what he went through this week on this golf course, this is going to be especially sweet. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in welcoming the 104th United States Open champion, Retief Goosen. Retief, first of all, congratulations. Back uh, in 2001 in Southern Hills in Oklahoma, you won uh, the U.S. Open for the first time in a playoff with Mark Brooks. On that occasion, your putter was almost your undoing. It saved you today. Yeah, I, uh, I putted well. Hold a few good putts coming down the, down the stretch, and, uh, and I watched Phil got it to four under. I thought, yeah, here we go again. I'm going to come out again on Monday to give myself a chance. Um, but uh, unfortunately, he made that uh, five and 17, and I made a good up and down on the bunker, and, and uh, I just didn't want to three putt the 18th again, that's all. <laughs> the adjective that's often applied to you is unflappable. It certainly was apt today. You hit only six greens in regulation, but you had 12 one putts and only 24 putts overall. Well, I, I knew it was going to come down to that. Um, the way the course was starting to, to dry out, and uh, I knew it was going to come down to chipping and putting, and. Uh, I was just grinding out and I was just kept trying to leave myself in places where I can have a chance of making my par putts and uh, everybody struggled. The course wasn't easy as we know and uh, I'm just lucky to be on top. You started the day as the leader. You didn't relinquish it until Mickelson birdied on 16. You fell one back at that point. Were you even, even for a moment slightly disheartened? Well no, I knew that you know these last two holes are going to be the key holes and uh, 
um, I made a good putt on uh, 16 to get even with him and uh, and like I say, from there uh, he made a mistake and I was just lucky to hang on. Jimmy Roberts noted a moment ago that not since 1963 has the final round of the U.S. Open gone by without a single golfer breaking par. Shinnecock was tough. Well, yeah, this golf course is unbelievable. You know, it's, uh, it's the shortest of the majors we play and, and for it to play so tough, it just shows you uh, what can be done to make the golf course tough without lengthening them. Phil Mickelson was, of course, gracious in his comments, said that you deserve to win, but even though you are a guy who's called unflappable, you couldn't have been unaware that the vast majority of the people here were rooting for somebody else. Um, oh, I didn't notice. Um, <laughs> um, no, um, no, I knew, uh, I knew it was going to come down to really Ernie and Phil. Those are going to be the two guys I'm going to need to to beat, and uh, I'm just very lucky to stand here with this trophy again. It's, uh, it's a great feeling. We know what it means to an American golfer to win the national championship here. What does it mean to those watching back in South Africa? Well, you know, it, I, uh, I hope this um, keeps helping South African golf. You know, the President's Cup was so good for golf down there last year, and, uh, you know, everybody is talking about opening academies down here, and, and, and the golf, junior golf things are really shaping up nicely down there. So uh, hopefully this will help and inspire them to uh, become great players. Your name has been etched on this trophy or will be twice. Quite an achievement. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Thank you. Retief Goosen, the 104th U.S. Open champion. Let's go back to Dan Hicks. Thank you, Bob. And you should see his wife, Tracy, applaud her husband on this uh, Father's Day Sunday. Uh, let's try to put this into perspective, Johnny. His putter did win this championship. Uh, Mickelson did make the double bogey, but... Uh, Boy, unflappable is a word for Retief Goosen. I mean, he was just calm, cool, when it looked like things might have been uh, going away for him, uh, he comes through. I'll say one putt of the last six screens, uh, 32 one putts for the week. Bottom line, you look at his scores, 70, 66, 69, 71 on a tough day today. That deserves to win the U.S. Open. It's that easy. Uh, Phil did have his chances there. He had a tough finish yesterday and a tough finish today, and that cost him. Well. The putter blade was hot right from the very first hole as we take a look at some of the highlights at the par four first. This is what Retief Goosen did to begin his day. Well, you can just see he's trying to lag it. This putts just off the charts fast. In the and meantime, Ernie was double bogeying the same hole, and that was just the whole day for the pairing there. It became Goosen's championship to win. This was a par save at five. That got him to stay at five under. And then look at this second at the par four eighth. Look at him tentatively looking at it, but it's a, a shot that he just undercuts it into the bunker, and now he's got almost an impossible bunker shot. That would turn out to be one of four bogeys that Goosen would make. He dropped a four under, then the tee shot at 11 this after another bogey at 10. Might have been the technically the best iron shot he hit all day long. Just cut it in there perfectly, fed it off that side slope. Of course, makes that putt for birdie. So after the two bogeys and three holes, he birdies 11, gets it back to four under. His lead was three at this point. And then at 13, well, oh, what can you say? Another there. one of those par savers. It was, and then at the 14th hole, for bogey, looks yep. like he's going to double it. Be a three-shot swing with Phil, who just who birdied uh, a hole ahead of him. Falls back to plus three. The lead was one, and then he was tied with Mickelson because Mickelson was birdie 15. And out of right the bunker. here again, another par save at 15 to remain at three under. And this putt to me was was it. I mean, all the pressure in the world's on him. The uphill putt, he hits it hard with the right hand and jars it. That got him to four under. And then all he needed was two putts from that distance to win the championship. A par this time at Shinnecock for Atif Goosen on the 72nd hole to put it away. Again, a 71 for Goosen on a golf course that averaged near 79. And what does he get? Well, he gets some cash, better than 1.1 million. Exemptions into the next five U.S. Opens, uh, five British Opens and all the things that uh, go along with this championship. Goosen, the ninth ranked player in the world. But there are things that, uh, that are just uh, speak for themselves that are priceless. On Father's Day Sunday, winning this championship, his son Leo handed to him earlier 
and this is what the 15 month old son said. Dada! Take Harry Dada! I'll tell you, a lot of players would, would have liked that pacifier today. <laughs> So one last look at some of the uh, scores. Goosen on top. Mickelson and Goosen, the only players under par. Three lefties in the top seven with Mickelson, Weir, and Steve Flesh, who grinded out a 74 today. And Spencer Levine, the big story from the amateur list, four amateurs of eight made the cut this weekend. Tie for 13th for the man that just turned 20 years old and now exempt for Pinehurst. What a week it's been for him. We'll see him at number two. Next year, as Levine gets the best finish by an amateur since Jim Simons tied for fifth in 71. And there is uh, Tiger Woods and the, uh, well, major championship. At least struggles continue for now, Johnny. Tie for 17th, uh, but hopefully he'll figure out how to get the ball on the fairway off the tee. Well, how about some final thoughts, not on Goosen, but on this championship at Shinnecock the fourth time here in 04. Well, just had a great feel. This is maybe the best championship uh, venue course in the in the U.S., possibly even in the world, and you can see from this course, it's under 7,000 yards. You had guys that basically bringing them to their knees, and every hole had its own challenge. There weren't any sort of patty cakes, maybe number five a little bit, even though the leader struggled on that hole. But besides that, every hole is a, sort of takes your breath away, and uh, it was a beautiful spot here, and if you ever get a chance to play out here, this is quite the place.